Welcome to PCB Heaven Tech Labs. This is the second episode from the series LED Driving and Controlling Methods. In this episode I will explain how can someone make a constant current LED driver with a single transistor. The operation of this driver is based on two facts. The first fact is that the meter voltage of a transistor follows the base voltage with a slight offset. In mathematical terms, we can say that the meter voltage is equal to the base voltage minus the base emitter voltage. The term VE is the emitter voltage and the term VB is the base voltage. The term VBE is the base emitter diode voltage drop. Typically, this value is 0.7 volts for silicon transistors and 0.3 for germanium transistors. This formula reveals that we can effectively set an emitter voltage by adjusting the base voltage. The other fact is that the collector current equals to the emitter current. Although theoretically this is not true, their difference is so small that practically they are the same. You can learn more details and infos about these two characteristics and much more in my website, in the transistor theory page. Let's see now how we can use these two facts to make a constant current driver. We will begin by biasing the base of the NPN transistor with a fixed voltage. The simplest way to do this is with a voltage divider. There are some criteria to choose the proper resistors, but typically you can choose R1 between 1 and 5 kilo ohms for small current applications. As for R2, we will use the formula for the voltage divider calculation. I will not explain in this video how to choose the base voltage since I have everything written down in my website in details. A typical 1.5 to 2 volts base voltage is usually a good choice. After setting a fixed voltage onto the base, we can start working with the transistor output. An emitter resistor will be used to set and stabilize the current. The idea is that the emitter voltage is fixed. As a matter of fact, the emitter voltage is 0.7 volts less than the base voltage. And since the base voltage is fixed using the voltage divider, the emitter voltage will also be fixed. In conclusion, a current will run through the emitter resistor. And since the emitter voltage is fixed, the current through the emitter resistor will also be fixed. This current is the emitter current. As we said before, the collector current is equal to the emitter current. On the collector, we connect the LED. So the current through the LED will be the same as the current through the emitter resistor, which is stable. And this is exactly how the circuit works. To calculate the emitter resistor, we need to know the forward current of the LED. We will then calculate a resistor with the Ohm's law. Let's see an example. Suppose that we want to drive this LED with 20 mA constant current. The power supply provides 12 volts. We will begin by estimating the first resistor of the voltage divider. This time, I will use an 1.5 kilo ohms resistor. Then I will use the voltage divider equation to calculate R2 for the base voltage 1.5 volts. The result from the above equation is 214.2 ohms. And since I don't have such a resistor, I will use a 220 ohms. The emitter voltage will then be 0.7 volts less than the base voltage. This means that it will be 0.8 volts. We can now calculate the emitter resistor using the Ohm's law. We will divide the emitter voltage, which is 0.8 volts, 
by the LED forward current, which is 20 mA. The result is 40 ohms. Therefore, I will use a 47 ohms resistor. As you see, with this circuit we can drive an LED with constant current regardless of the LED forward voltage. As long as the supply voltage is higher than the LED forward voltage, the driver will provide fixed current to the LED. Additionally, we can connect more LEDs in series. The same current will run through all LEDs regardless of their number. Yet again, the sum of the forward voltages of all LEDs must not exceed the supply voltage, otherwise the circuit will not be able to provide enough current. The power dissipation on the transistor and on the emitter resistor must be also taken into account for high current applications. For the resistor we will use the I square R formula. We square the emitter current and multiply this by the resistor value. In our example, the power dissipation on the emitter resistor is 18.8 mW. So, a common quarter watt resistor can easily handle this power. As for the transistor, we need to know first the forward voltage of the LED. Either we refer to the manufacturer datasheet, or we can simply measure it with a voltmeter across the LED ledge. In our example, the forward voltage is about 3.2 volts. We can now calculate the collector emitter voltage by subtracting from the supply voltage, the LED forward voltage and the emitter voltage. Then we multiply this value by the emitter current. In our example, the power dissipation on the transistor is 160 mW. We can now refer to the transistor datasheet and check if this transistor is able to dissipate this power. Thank you for watching this video and don't forget to visit my website for more interesting theories.